Matt Roberts with D1 Ticker and Collegiate Sports Connect, joined by Northern Illinois AD Sean Frazier, Mac Champs, 9-4, and four, off an 0-6. So here's what's interesting. How does the postseason evaluation of your football program change given the results of the season? Does it at all? Yeah, it's a great question. First of all, thanks a lot, man. I really appreciate you having me. And, uh, yeah, of course it changes, right? You know, expectations of what they are. You know, it's interesting because there's a lot of expectations at NIU, and Thomas Hammock knows all about them, especially coming off the Joe Novak tree, uh, watching the program blossom, especially in the foundation that he was a part of. So, yeah, from a valuation standpoint, it's all about getting better, right? You know, one of the things I love about Thomas is that he's brought in a significant culture of responsibility, you know, and the quality controls that I've had, and I've had been at different places, as a player at Alabama and Wisconsin, now at NIU for nine years. You take a look at all the things that made us special, especially in the rums. You know, we got three MAC titles during my era. We have six to uh, overall in football alone. Um, and, you know, we're constantly getting better. Mm -hmm. The trajectory of the program, the personnel, offense, defense, special teams. So now the conversation is, okay, what can we do better? You know, uh, we know we were uh, uh, winning games really at close margins. Right. Uh, how do we separate ourselves? How, how do we take a look at the non-conference scheduling? Uh, certain personnel issues. You know, we, we didn't use the portal to the extent that many people think. We only had three scholarship portal people. Uh, and they were significant. Sure. Uh, I don't want to mi minimize Rocky Lombardi or, or any of our others that we have in the program. But we we're also the second youngest team in FBS to do that. Only, only second to Navy. Uh, we've got over 78 to 80 freshmen on our team. So now the trajectory is, okay, wow. We're going to have some, some people that have played a lot of football. Uh, how do we continue to push, position ourselves within the league and nationally? So it's an ongoing conversation about personnel, sure. both in uh, coaches, uh, both in uh, student-athletes, and just overall, programmatically, uh, taking a look at our facilities, taking a look at everything around the program so we could be at, a, at the championship level. So you noted it is different depending on results. Yes. You, you're describing where you're at now and how you're thinking about where the program is going from a growth standpoint. What was your mindset 365 days ago and how you were framed up how to get back to this spot? Yeah, I, I tell you, it's stressful. Uh, you know, we had just won the championship in 2018. Mm -hmm. All right. So, yeah, don't look at us old poor, you know, NIU, Sean Frazier. Okay, yeah, no, you, you know the road to Detroit and the MAC championship really well. The real issue is doing it with a new coaching staff, uh, with new personnel and a new system. OK, completely new. We stripped it down to the up gaps. Um, I totally believe in what Coach Hammock, obviously, I can say that now, was trying to do, especially offensively. Uh, and uh, we will have patience. You know, we didn't even know there was going to be a season at all. You know, last year, we had a COVID right, year, right. shortened year. We were only able to get six games. We followed the programs. We're one of the, the few schools in our league that actually got all six games in without having any issues uh, on, on the COVID side. But, yeah, we, we took a look at this, and if you would have told me that we'd be MAC champions, I'd say that's a bit ambitious. Is the expectation to be MAC championship? Sure, right, right. Absolutely. That's where we need to be. But I think bowl eligible, uh, eligible as well as looking at the trajectory of the of the program is where I want it to be. As we kept on winning, as we, as, as we believed, and as we saw the coaching and all the other things come into play, it's just a magical journey. You, you, you know, it's not lost on me. The other part of this is that, you know, the first African-American coach, uh, at NIU, as a former player, it's not lost on me with the significance of having a head coach, African American coach, at the FBS level. Uh, so that's that's there. So so many firsts mm -hmm. that went in. Really passionate journey. I tell you, I broke down after just uh, thinking about it in my hotel room. You said, "What just happened?" You know. So pretty exciting stuff for Coach Hammock, NIU, myself, just everyone involved. It is a good story. You used the words, "We stripped it down to the hubcaps." What's that mean? Well, again, if you're coming out of 18, and yes, it wasn't a clear, you know, dominant performance. We played Buffalo. We actually had to come back 20, 21 points from halftime. We were down 20, 21, uh, 21 points at halftime. Think about that. Going into the pro, uh, going into that particular game in 18 and winning it. Uh, so we had people in the program that ha have a ring, have won a MAC champion. We had a number of folks still in the program. Uh, we decided to change some things. Some folks left. 
uh, some of our student athletes left because the offensive scheme, the different coaches and others, they had transferred out. Our coaching staff that was there uh, uh, went to Temple. Uh, they took some of their uh, personnel as well as student athletes. Uh, so again, stripping it down is that because we, you know, we went a different direction with our offensive set. Some people didn't see themselves in the offense or the defense and they decided to transfer out. So then we started looking around and we had to fill some holes. Henceforth, the 80 freshmen that we have. So now, with, with all that said, it was it, it, no one on the team uh, uh, um, had, what I would say, prominent roles. They all had, you know, serviceable roles. They were all a part of it. We have uh, uh, kids who who've been on the team, but we stripped it down because the whole look of the program offensively, defensively, and special teams was different. It was completely different. So that's the strip. And then you got to be have to have some some repetition, some familiarity, uh, some people that are brand new to the position, brand new to the university. So stripping it down and building it back up and then winning it, you know, after three years, it's, uh, uh, it's, it doesn't happen every day. Sure. I'll just put it that way. Last question. How does the month of December change? How much can you get done between the end of the regular season? You just won the MAC championship. You're playing in a bowl game. Can you use that time to address some of what we're talking about here in terms of further growth, or do you have to wait till after the bowl game because we got bowl prep? Well, no, you, you, you do. You're constantly getting better, right? From, from a formal coaching standpoint, you're always trying to take a look at the things that you can do better. You're always having those conversations with Can both. you implement now? Can you start implementing? I, I don't know about implement. You can make adjustments based on uh, your competition. You know, we play Coastal Carolina. We're going to do some things specifically uh, to a game plan for Coastal uh, Carolina, but I think going to the next year, I think you're always saying, okay, now we've taken a look. We've won a MAC championship. We've won a lot of games. Uh, but, you know, here's some things that we need to get better at. And we know what they look like, and so are our opponents. So we're going to make sure that we recruit. We're going to make sure that we firm that up, and we're going to get better in the offseason to do that. And, it's, and, it's, and it starts day one, right after uh, the bowl game. For us, right after the 17th, we get right back after it from a recruiting standpoint, and we go and, and, and we start trying to win our, our next MAC championship. Is there an advantage – being an AD and understanding from the student athlete level to the coaching level, now the administrative level, the vibe, the inner workings, the constant grind of the sport of football. It's a grind. I think that, you know, my wife, I, I love her dearly. She's had to deal with me as a, as a coach and now an administrator, and uh, it's a grind. Um, I, I don't take off that hat at all um, as it relates to, you know, program development, evaluation, uh, understanding – you know, the, the, the whole impact of what Division One FBS football is about. And I know Coach Hammock doesn't do it. I know his coaches work extremely hard because I'm right there shoulder to shoulder. Um, it, it is a major commitment. Um, it is a major part of the, the process. For us, it means a lot as far as our athletic department, our branding, our exposure. And I think that if you do take off, um, unfortunately, it'll catch up back at, uh, at you. And I think that this time that we saw that we, we saw uh, championship behavior with the, the former co coaching staff that left for uh, Temple, and then we saw uh, the same amount of expectation and success. So what's the common denominator? The common denominator is the expectation as well as the system that we have in place. And I don't take credit for that. NIU has put together a great system. I just happen to be uh, at the helm right now. I'm humbled by that, but it's no taking off. There's no substitute for daily preparation. Uh, learned that at Bama. God bless him. Uh, but I will tell you this, though. Um, it's so great to see Coach Hammock, the, uh, our student athletes, our administration, our president, Lisa Freeman, all coming together and then able to hoist up a trophy. Man, that's some good stuff. We look forward to following this story in 22 and beyond. Thank you for joining us, Sean. I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. You're welcome.